ESPN Plus recently released a documentary about the 2018 murder of Lauren McCluskey. That has some people asking important questions about what the university has done to prevent a similar tragedy from happening ever again. I'm joined by Keith Squires. He is the chief safety officer at the University of Utah. Keith, I know you've had an opportunity to watch the documentary. I want to start with your reaction to what you saw. What was it like watching the documentary? It was very difficult. Uh, my wife and I watched it. Um, um, our heart goes out to Lauren's family, um, you know, having had the privilege of getting to know them the past couple of years. Um, I just uh, feel like um, the documentary um, did a very nice job of being able to uh, share with everyone uh, just what a, an amazing and caring person Lauren was and uh, a little bit about her. Uh, along with the tragic circumstances that uh, took place. And um, from my position uh, and responsibilities for um, law enforcement and public safety, uh, it was equally difficult because it uh, uh, clearly reflected uh, the failures that took place and the things that uh, if they had been in place, could have made a difference on the outcome. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, tell us a little bit about your role uh, first as uh, the person leading the investigation into the public safety department and how things were handled uh, in that entire case with Lauren McCluskey and a, a little bit about what you learned from that investigation. Uh, my involvement uh, began um, just a few days after uh, the tragedy and uh, was contacted by the president of the university at the time and asked if I could assist with an independent investigation uh, into the university's response to Lauren's request for help. And so uh, from that, I spent uh, was able to spend the next uh, six weeks as uh, part of a three-person investigation team, um, specifically uh, and having access to all of the information and uh, individuals involved in the university's uh, response to Lauren. And from that, uh, we had very critical findings, unfortunately. Uh, we made 30 recommendations to the university of areas that uh, they needed to uh, make improvements to ensure that uh, they could do everything possible to uh, reduce the chances of anything like this happening again. So tell me a little bit about those recommendations you made. What were the key changes, maybe not the entire list of 30, but what were the key changes that have taken place uh, since the tragedy with Lauren McCluskey? Well, some of the key changes and, and uh, really initiated through our recommendations were uh, improved communication and coordination, um, not only within the police department, uh, but also with uh, other campus partners and being able to um, identify when there is someone who is uh, being threatened or potentially in danger on campus uh, so that that information can get uh, to uh, those who can bring resources uh, that the university has many of and uh, there's additional throughout our community. Um, but uh, that, that was one of the key failures is that uh, unfortunately during Lauren's need, time of need, um, there were not supervisors getting involved. Um, there were not uh, other departments getting involved to the extent that they need to. Uh, one of the key changes now, and since I've been in this position, is that uh, any incident that uh, any of our personnel uh, find that somebody's being threatened or been harmed is immediately communicated up through uh, various levels of supervision to me. And uh, at each one of those levels, uh, everyone's looking at what resources need to be brought in to help the individual. Um, our operations now are victim-centered, and so that uh, that's our primary uh, emphasis and our priority is to uh, look at the victim's needs, to take care of them, and to be able to help them through whatever they've experienced and whatever that process is forward. There were no victims advocates. Uh, that was one of our recommendations. Now we have a team of victims advocates that work closely with our officers. Um, they're not only there on the day of whatever happened, 
but there for them as they move forward and um, bringing resources uh, to them and uh, supporting them uh, through every step of the process. So processes and changes in process are an important part of this. But when you have uh, a situation, a tragedy like this that occurs, uh, oftentimes there are changes in personnel. You were the one who was brought in to lead the investigation, and that transitioned you into a position where now you're leading public safety for the university. But you are not the only change that has been made in your department. Can you tell us a little bit about how much uh, turnover you've had since that time and the types of officers that you're looking to hire and have hired as part of the safety department uh, as a result of this investigation and the changes that came subsequently? Well, with the great support of um, our new president, uh, Taylor Randall, um, and the university administration, um, I've been able to bring together a team and uh, through an effort of recruiting, um, we've actually uh, changed the makeup of the department. Uh, over 94% of the individuals working here and, and serving now were not here in October of 2018. And uh, we really are looking for individuals who want to be here and want to serve this community. Um, this community is very special, very unique, and uh, it uh, is very diverse and, and everybody matters. And so we have to ensure that uh, we have uh, people who are at the top of their game uh, professionally, um, but also just who they are, are caring and empathetic and uh, here to help anybody who needs us. I want to talk a little bit about your vision for improving safety on campus. I imagine that comes with a decent amount of uh, relationship building and repairing um, some you know, trust that was perhaps broken before the tragedy occurred and now making sure people understand uh, campus-wide the changes that have been made and how this department is different than it was in 2018. Yes. Um, some of the the problems that and uh, communication issues that were identified back then um, involved uh, individuals who were being alerted to um, some of the dangers that uh, Lauren may potentially be experiencing. Unfortunately, they were not able to get to a level of uh, uh, significance enough so that it alerted a broader opportunity for uh, departments to work together. And so, now, um, through, um, as I've mentioned before, uh, communication and alert, uh, it happens early on. Anything that's uh, alerted to the person who's working in uh, residential education in the housing area will get communicated up through their supervisors. And then that cross communication to our department is so essential. And that allows us to have our officers start to investigate if there's a perpetrator that's involved, um, being able to identify who that individual is and uh, be able to uh, help stop whatever's taking place. And then, as I've mentioned, uh, get the victim uh, survivor in a situation where our victim's advocates can assist them. So it involves teamwork across not just only public safety, but also with our partners at uh, student services, at housing and residential education, as well as the Office of Equal Opportunity. For people who may have additional questions or want to reach out to the safety department, I know they can go to your website at safety.utah.edu. Scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a button that says, let your voice be heard, and they can reach out to you. And Keith, if they do that, uh, who's going to get those emails? Who's going to see those? That goes right to me. And uh, I'll either respond myself or uh, if there's someone who has a special uh, assignment and information, uh, then they will contact that person back. But uh, it's very important for us to hear from uh, anyone. And uh, that's a big part of our efforts going forward. All right. Keith Squires, Chief Safety Officer at the University of Utah. Thanks so much for your insight and giving us a little additional perspective. Thanks, Marty. I appreciate it.